Good morning. Well, I'll just jump right in. Don't want to keep you guys waiting. I have a dream that one day our Bahama land will not only be run by a singular political party, but will also be run by the youth of the country. In other words, I want the Bahamas to be run by a senior government and a junior government. Have you ever wondered how our Bahama land would be if the youth of this nation actually had a say and they were actually involved in leading the country? Aren't we as youth intelligent? Innovative, knowledgeable about our country? I thought of an idea after watching a favorite show of mine. Akage oversees the activities of their village, from sending ninja on missions to, to making decisions regarding the safety of their people. A village's Kage is generally acknowledged as its most powerful ninja. It's time for Project Kage. In other words, kids actualizing governance every day. Kids actualizing governance every day is a plan to get the youth of this nation involved with the development of a better Bahamas, using their ideas fully and to the best of their abilities. Project Kage is a plan developed by me to have a youth section of the government to help with the governing body. They will work along with the government to ensure the decisions made by said government are in tandem with the constitution and the will of the people. The Bahamas is a democratic monarchy. In other words, Bahamians have to write the freely vote while the head of state, which is the Queen of England and her representative, who is our Governor General. Despite this, the country is actually run by the Prime Minister and his or her selected cabinet. The country is actually run by three different branches of government, judicial, executive, and legislative. The judicial branch is led by the Attorney General and run by the judges and magistrates while the executive branch is led by the prime minister and is run by the cabinet ministers for different ministries. Example, Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Education, and Ministry of Public Works. The legislative branch is led by the leader of the proposition, who is the prime minister, who heads the lower house of assembly. The upper house is run by the appointed senators and the leader is known as the president of the senate. Both houses work together to pass laws. The members of parliament elected by the Bahamians in their respective constituencies meet and pass bills to then go to the Senate for final approving. As it's in its prototypical phase, Kage will first be applied to the lower house of assembly, the house of assembly. In this new system, there will be a senior house of assembly and a junior house of assembly, both of which will be elected by the people in their respective constituencies. The youths of this nation are normally neglected, and in many instances, sometimes we become the little menace of society and are looked down upon. The only reason the majority of the youth of this nation are not involved with government is because the seniors almost never give us a chance to express our ideas to the fullest extent. Through this form of government, the senior men and women of this country will have no choice but to hear the voices of the youth. To be considered a youth in this new system, you must be between the ages of 16 to 34 and the seniors are aged 35 and above, meaning that there is no age limit for the senior government official. The new qualifications to work in this government, from an academic standpoint, you achieving a minimum of five A's in your BJC's and a minimum GPA of 3.10. There, no there will be no specified race, but you must be a Bahamian citizen for a minimum of three years. In Project Kage, there will be senior members of the House of Assembly and junior members of the House of Assembly. In this new government system, the senior MPs of each constituency would hear the needs of those 35 years and above, while the junior MPs would hear the needs of the citizens in the constituency who are 34 and below. Since our current MPs meet on Wednesdays of each week, the junior MPs would meet on Thursdays. The decisions made by this type of government would have to be approved by the junior and senior MP, even though the junior and senior MP for each constituency must keep each other abreast and aware of what their arm is doing in the constituency, they would only have to decide over a decision over a dollar value of 2000 the government, will, the government will draw from their experience and expertise in every area of governance. The government must use this expertise to enhance and perfect all projects, plans, and decisions to pass bills, create legislature, and make laws for the country's betterment. Please allow me to relay a scenario for you. You ran for the junior MP position for, let's say, the constituency of Marco City, and you won. 
You are now the holder of $10,000 per annum, stipend from the public treasury. This means your job now is to use said money to act on the needs of your constituency in partnership with the senior MP. To make things flow smoother and to make your job easier, I decided that the senior MP will deal with the claims made by those 34, 35 and above, while you, the junior counterpart, deals with those 34 and below. You and your partner will meet every Thursday and make a plan that would, be, that would benefit all citizens of your constituency. This way, the load to bear with helping an entire constituency is evenly distributed between the junior and senior MP position. The mind of the youth is a treasure, as when it's in its early stage, it is like a sponge, and it is filled with so many ideas, some of which can be vital to helping this nation. With their direct involvement in government, they would be heard to a greater degree. They'd be able to assist in recreating the country as we know it, and to say what the underlying problem is. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed people can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. Margaret Mead. Governments past and present have struggled term after term to enact real change and lead our country forward, but with only little success. So I end with this question that I ask that you truly ponder. Don't you think it's time that we, whom they call the youth and the future of our country, actually join in the development of the future of this nation? Thank you.